Welcome to Leveraging AI for Mobile App Testing on Real Devices, presented by Apple Tools and Cobaton. First up, Frank Moyer, Cobaton's Chief Technology Officer. Frank is an AI visionary with more than 30 years of experience. He consistently elevates product capabilities and champions quality assurance in SaaS environments. At Cobaton, he spearheads the integration of artificial intelligence into mobile testing, marrying next-gen technologies with unparalleled user experience. Cobaton empowers enterprises to accelerate mobile app delivery through manual, automated, and no-code testing on real devices. Cobaton's AI-augmented mobile testing platform uniquely delivers one-hour continuous testing and integration. Thank you, Pat. Next. Martin Kowaleski from Apple Tools. Martin leads the global sales engineering team here at Apple Tools. For nearly 20 years, he has delivered as a problem solver, dynamic storyteller, and proven pre-sales leader in providing solutions to achieve real business outcomes. With the power of AI, Apple Tools provides intelligent, cutting edge testing solutions, revolutionizing how applications are developed, tested, and delivered. We've pioneered an AI-powered autonomous testing platform designed for the future that is effortly accessible to all and delivers unparalleled business value for our customers' world. All right, thanks, Pam. Um, good afternoon, good evening, um, good morning uh, to wherever you are in the world. Um, we are, uh, Frank and I are very excited to uh, present this topic for you. Um, and let me start with just a, a little agenda of what we're going to uh, talk through today. Uh, we're going to first start talking about the challenges in native mobile software delivery, uh, things that we have seen from the Apple Tools perspective, as well as Cobaton's perspective um, in the mobile device uh, arena. Um, then we're going to talk through the Apple Tools intelligent testing platform. Uh, with Cobaton as a uh, strategic partner in this area. And then we'll get to the fun stuff, um, showing an integration demo of manual to automation with visual AI, or what I am calling zero to hero. And then we'll finish up with a Q&A. So let's talk a little bit about um, what's going on in the market. You know, every company is now a software company, and as companies have gone digital, they are all seeing an explosion in the number of applications they build, the complexity of these applications, the frequency of releases, and the number of screens and devices these apps are used on. All of this has happened while being faced with budget constraints and limited resources in today's economy. And unfortunately, while testing complexity has grown exponentially, traditional testing tools and approaches can only scale linearly and are struggling to keep pace with this explosive growth. The reality is causing a major gap between the testing that's needed and the testing that's actually being performed. So let's review just a couple examples. Um, made of, uh, manual testing and traditional test automation tools can only really validate a limited amount of scenarios and screens resulting in poor coverage. And, you know, from a mobile perspective, um, we've seen this actually become much more prevalent um, as, you know, companies have gone to a mobile first um, type of uh, deployment. We also see that Every UI or functionality change requires a rewrite of the tests or heavy maintenance, resulting in bottlenecks and slow releases. And then finally, you know, teams commonly try to solve it by adding more manual resources, which results in an ever-growing uh, team size and expensive testing costs. So Frank, um, you want to talk a little bit about mobile maturity? Definitely, Martin. Thank you. When I talk about mobile maturity, uh, we look at it from a how far are you in the journey to get to automation? 
Um, and on the next slide, I'm going to talk about how everyone, a lot of organizations want to get there. But um, when you look at low maturity, we're looking at organizations that are mostly doing manual testing. And, and that's 90% um, of organizations are in that manual with a little bit of automation. Um, and the, the cost of doing that, especially with mobile, is significant on the business where you're trying to get new releases out to the market of your mobile app as quickly as possible. And um, what we're going to talk about today is how, you know, I love the zero to hero that Martin shared of how do we get uh, manual testers to automation as fast as possible. And then when you're there, how can you verify and validate and use the power of Apple tools to verify the visual aspects of your application? Because the impact of not having that in place, we have one customer where 0.3% of their mobile market, just one device, if there is a visual defect that includes login, that costs them $1.2 million a month. That is a uh, significant impact that Apple Tools solves. And so the good thing is, you know, people realize the problem ahead. Organizations realize that um, getting to automation will help them deliver faster. Uh, Kobitan did primary research towards the tail end of last year. And we um, talked to a few hundred companies with 100 plus employees each focused on mobile. And what we found is that uh, while organizations today are less than uh, less than 40 percent are um, have greater than 50 percent automation, they want you you have about 60 um, percent want to get to that greater than 50 percent. There's a huge drive to get there, but it is um, it's hard, you know. And M Martin talked about a lot of the challenges with mobile. Um, getting to automation is a uh, it's it's a mountain because there are no specifications like there are in browser, right? The iOS and Android render differently. There's just a lot of complexity there that uh, we, with the zero to hero metaphor, we're going to show you how to get there quickly. All right, thanks, thanks, Frank. Um, so, in addition to lower than desired maturity on the mobile side versus web. We also see today's testing tools only address specific use cases and different tools are needed uh, for each task. Additionally, testing and engineering teams often use multiple uh, disparate tools. You know, for example, you know, on the QA side, we see you know, Appium um, as the primary automation framework. You know, for on the dev side, we see native tooling like XCUI or, or Espresso. And that trickles even down to the execution side, where we actually see teams leveraging different device lab approaches um, within different teams within a single organization. And ultimately, what that does is it creates silos it res and restricts uh, collaboration. And these problems continue to compound at an incredible rate. And ultimately, the result of this testing gap and this new reality is that teams are faced with terrible trade-offs. They must either lose productivity and spend more resources on testing to ensure quality, slow down release processes to allow enough time for testing, or simply accept lower coverage and risk production issues and re regression bugs. And the good news is um, that Apply Tools is um, come out with our intelligent testing platform to provide full support for automated and manual testing on real device. And our intelligent platform is the first to alleviate these testing challenges by, de by decoupling testing activities and infusing AI at each step of the testing life cycle for both developers and testers. We offer a fundamentally new way to test your applications without needing to rip and load replace your current development and testing workflows. 
We are the only platform that leverages AI to give developers, testers, and non-technical users the ability to test at 10x scale. Now, although our platform provides a comprehensive solution for web, mobile web, native mobile, desktop, and others, let's just focus on the solution components specific to native mobile. And I'm going to start first on the EYES SDKs. Um, the EYES SDKs allow engineering forward mobile teams to easily integrate their current testing frameworks and leverage existing tests with our platform, harnessing AI capa capabilities at day one. Apply Tools Eyes, uh, which is our validation engine, and it's powered by visual AI that automates both test validation and test maintenance. And you'll see that in the demo in a little bit. And then finally, um, Cobaton. Um, our partnership with Cobaton extends our intelligent infrastructure capabilities for web, um, specifically efficient, scalable parallel execution with self-healing locators built into the platform to help the delivery of mission-critical mobile apps with the fastest, most intelligent, and secure mobile testing platform. Um, so let me um, over to you, Frank, to highlight some other key value drivers specifically around Cobaton. Yeah, so I'm just going to give a, a thank you, Martin, a real highlight of the what differentiates Cobaton from others that you know, like Martin shared earlier in the in the slide. Um, fat, everything about Cobaton is about speed. Whether it's a manual test where we render at 30 frames per second millisecond latency from around the world. Or it's our automation execution engine where we can run Appium two to three times faster, whether it's iOS or Android, two to three times faster than basic Appium execution. Um, and on top of that, like Martin mentioned, the ability to do um, AI augmented testing. We can take, uh, we're the only ones in the market does native app self-healing. We use artificial intelligence to avoid the uh, when you're running Appium, um, element not found, the dreadful, oh no, my all my scripts failed last night because the developer changed something. So um, this is about rapidly getting to automation uh, from a manual test. And I'm really excited about the, the demo later that Martin's going to share with you. That will show you the power of the platform. All right. Thanks, Frank. So as we... Um, you know, as we describe the components of the platform, let's talk briefly about how you can derive value at the different phases of the testing lifecycle. First, from an authoring perspective, um, integrating the visual AI into your existing functional automation. We can easily replace brittle assertion code with a single visual assertion to cover the entire screen, capturing both intended and unintended changes. And, and we've seen that this enables teams to reduce test creation and ongoing maintenance time by up to 80%. With our SDKs and our visual AI, we can run resilient, stable tests at scale by leveraging AI-driven visual locators to address complex applications where finding traditional locators has not been possible. And then finally, we can improve test coverage at scale by running your mobile tests fast on a wide range of real iOS and Android devices to achieve visual perfection for every customer. As we start talking about um, for mobile teams that are less mature in automation, those teams that are predominantly doing manual testing today, we can reduce the friction it takes in creating automation by leveraging um, our Appium script generation. This capability takes a previously executed manual session and leverages AI to generate a resilient and scalable Appium test. When combined with our visual AI, this allows teams to succeed with automation to increase quality with full functional and visual coverage in a very fast and scalable way. 
On the validation side, um, this is you know our bread and butter from an Apply Tools perspective, and what we've been doing for the last ten years that we've been in business. Um, so we can increase test coverage with AI assertions by using visual AI to validate hundreds of elements on the screen across different mobile platforms instantly with a single line of code. We can also leverage visual AI to easily test dynamic content heavy native apps without having to rewrite and maintain tests. And finally, we provide that mechanism um, across any UI dev framework with simplicity uh, and ease of use. When we talk about our additional capabilities of uh, Cobaton, um, we can then leverage the intelligent mobile testing infrastructure to validate critical app performance response times at every step to ensure the best experience for your app. We also have built-in accessibility testing uh, to efficiently validate content labeling touch target size, and color contrast. As we shift to the execution um, of your automation, we can boost your testing speed by supporting manual and automated testing in a single unified platform. Um, we can improve release cycles and provide faster feedback to developers by boosting Appium execution by two to three times by harnessing the power of Kobicon's AI and machine learning, as you heard earlier um, from Frank. And then just like Apply Tools can do on the web side with our self-healing infrastructure, we can automatically heal tests with broken locators in the native environment to reduce test flakiness and the amount of time spent um, overall on test maintenance. This frees up teams so they can focus on what matters, improving test coverage, increasing quality, and allowing developers to spend more time delivering new features to market. As we shift over to the analyze side um, of the life cycle, um, with Apply Tools, we can get comprehensive reports and insight for all of your native test runs. We can quickly surface what code changes caused each UI change quickly or for any issue. And finally, group similar changes and issues automatically to help accelerate test maintenance and analysis. On the Cobaton side, with their uh, test result session explorer, we can get uh, we can quickly identify root cause for native app failures through a com comprehensive set of tooling, including videos of the execution, uh, device logs, uh, Appium server logs, system metrics like CPU, memory, network, battery drain, et cetera. We, we also perform network payload analysis and provide a detailed crash analytics for each test session so that we can quickly get to root cause and resolve our mobile or any mobile testing failure. That's awesome. So with the intelligent testing platform from Apply Tools, we've revolutionized the entire native mobile testing cycle with AI. And, you know, as we kind of talked through earlier, we can talk a little bit about the old way, which is, you know, leveraging and anchoring test locators um, and the test code depending upon the application code for interaction. But with Apply Tools and Cobiton, we can generate, uh, we can apply generated self-healing tests um, and do that from a manual session and AI and leverage the AI to prevent tests from breaking to, again, provide a more consistent approach, continue to um, deliver functionality efficiently, um, and continue to market faster. From a test validation perspective, the old way of, of writing assertions for a few elements in the UI and receiving frequent false positives and failures 
with the Apply Tools Cobiton way, we can use our smart UI validation. We can provide full screen AI powered assertion to invalidate the entire UX and functionality in one step. From the test execution perspective, we can, you know, typically we're seeing, you know, customers rerunning tests multiple times against, dis, uh, against different devices with flaky locators. The device grid is slow, unstable, and vulnerable. And what we've done in our partnership with Cobaton is provide a fast and efficient unified mobile platform with turbocharged Appium execution with full page functional and visual coverage. From the analysis perspective, you know, each UI change in the old way was requiring manual review and highly skilled developers to fix the test. In the Apply Tools Cobaton way, we, we have maintenance is a one-click process using AI to help group together similar changes to, again, uh, provide fast, efficient feedback loop to all uh, people involved in the process. So as we um, finally wrap up on the uh, product side, uh, another thing that is unique about our platform is that anyone on your team is able to create tests, review results, and contribute to application quality. This includes designers, developers, QA, ops, and even business analysts. Um, which would also include marketing and context helpers. So with the intelligent uh, testing platform, we help company, companies across all phases of the automation journey from manual testing all the way to continuous testing. And now we get to the point where we actually will show you how we do it. Um, so get ahead, Frank. Just uh, before you get started on the demo, um, the, the problem or that uh, Apple Tools addresses, visual testing, we have a customer who runs over a thousand automation scripts a night and has to manually review those scripts for visual issues across uh, about a hundred different device types. They, um, over 50% of the defects found in tests are visual defects. The biggest problem that we see in the market with defects are visual defects. And that is a painstaking process to do manually. And Apple Tools leads the market in, in performing that. So I just wanted to, like, in the context of mobile, this is a big problem that we're solving and, and Apple Tools leads the way. All right, thanks, Frank. Um, just to set the stage for the demo, um, you heard Frank and, and me talk earlier about one of the major challenges in native mobile testing is that teams struggle with creating automation and rely heavily on manual testing for both functional and visual validation. So what we are going to demonstrate is the power of the platform by going from a manual test to a scalable, resilient automation infused with visual AI, i.e. zero to hero. How we're gonna start this scenario is I'm actually going to record a simple workflow on an Android device, and I'm gonna launch my Pixel 6 Pro. And one of the things that you'll notice right out of the box is the fast time to load uh, of the Cobaton device platform. Um, here, we now have our device up and running. So now I'm going to actually install my stock quote app um, on Android. So I'm gonna click here to install the stock quote app. It's going to uh, install. And here we actually have launched our native mobile app. It is a simple app that essentially we will click on a market we will, the, uh, we will randomly generate an actual quote, and then we will um, look at the history of the quotes, we'll delete all the results, and then we'll end the scenario. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on or tap on the Dow Jones, which is gonna load the stock quote page, um, which generated a, uh, a congratulations, an image, and the text of Visa. 
And then I'm going to actually go over and click over to history to see the history of any previous quotes that I've generated. And then I'm actually just to resolve all of my stocks, I'm going to delete those. And then I'm going to return to the US index by clicking on the unit US index page. This is just a simple workflow of navigating through the app manually. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm actually going to exit the session. So what's going to happen now is that, you know, the, the test is going to complete its running. You can see that, you know, we have an overview status um, showing details about the session, the testing type, you know, my start and end time, the apps. We have any logs from the actual manual execution. If we wanted to go and explore some of the details of this test case, um, including things like, you know, at what time and what performance we saw for the actions that we took, we're able to easily do that within the session explorer. We can also review additional metrics um, that are apart um, once the test has been completed. But the power of this scenario is actually clicking over to the automated test case. And at this point, you'll see here that we have all of the screens and the actions that we took to execute that manual test case. Um, and you can see that we saw the four test cases, the steps where we clicked on um, the Dow Jones, we generated a quote, we clicked on history, we then deleted the stocks, and then we recorded and clicked on the index to return. And if you'll notice that th we have now um, leveraged the inherent AI and ML capabilities of Cobaton to actually generate a fully functional automated test for this particular scenario. And to be able to extract that and export it, all we need to do is click export um, the Appium script. We can choose what testing framework we like out of the box. Um, we support TestNG, JUnit, uh, Moco with Node.js, and C, C Sharp with NUnit. And all we really need to do here is actually download the actual script. And if we expand it, we can actually take that script and out of the box, um, begin to execute it so that we can now have a fully functional um, Appium script. And what's amazing about this is that I did this in you know, five minutes. Um, this process would be hours of a technical developer um, being able to discover what those elements are, how to perform the click, and that's assuming that you had access to the devices, and it takes a lot of code to write, a lot of code to maintain for not a lot of coverage. So what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to switch over to our um, to a project, the same project that I downloaded earlier, and show you the steps that it takes to infuse um, this functional test with Visual AI. And we're going to start by just opening up the project dependencies that are provided by the Appium project and just simply add the Apply Tools SDK. So here we're adding the latest version of our Appium Java 5 SDK. And this is a one-time effort. Um, you'll do it once and then be able to leverage it for every test moving forward. Um, the second step in the process is we're going to add some configuration um, to the script so that we can add eyes to perform the visual validations. So here we need to assign our um, API key so that we can establish and execute and communicate with the Apply Tools platform. We will also add accessibility validation. Uh, for color contrast out of the box for every native mobile screen that we capture. And we're going to set a minimum level of AA and WCAG 2.1. And then um, that is it. Um, the next phase 
is we are actually going to add Apply tools to the setup for every test. So every time that any test case that you execute will enable um, Apply tools at the start and at the end. So once we do this for one time, we'll be able to consistently have Apply tools as part of every test execution. And then to validate each screen as part of the flow, um, here you see that this is the actual test case that Kobiton automatically generated. So here you can see that we started our um, started the app and we've introduced a single line of code called eyes.check, which takes a full page screenshot of the state of the UI and um, enables us to be able to visually compare that on subsequent runs. So at each point where we want to add visual validation and functional validation in that single line of code, we will add eyes.check to that piece of the code. Again, for each test, this is a one-time um, effort. Um, and one of the things that I know that we have talked about within um, our two organizations is making this a part of the automatic script generation. Yep. But, but essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna then click on the Dow Jones um, icon, we're gonna take a visual validation, we're gonna click on the history, we're gonna then perform that validation and so on and so forth. So now just by executing that test, we are gonna be able to take that test that we executed um, manually and now execute it as part of an automated test case. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run that test and we'll actually see that running here on the Pixel 6 Pro. And you'll see that we've actually launched the application. We will then you know, proceed through the execution. We've, we're generating a stock quote. We're actually taking a full page screenshot of the stock quote screen. We've now moved over to the history. We're taking a full page screenshot. We've tapped on the delete all stocks button. And then we've returned to the US index screen. So we've now completed that automated test run. And if we come over to the Apply Tools dashboard, you'll see that we actually have an execution. We have a new test shown in our dashboard. Um, the first time you run this test, it will actually create the baseline or the expected result. Um, and you'll see that by the status of new. And if I expand the test, you'll actually see the individual screens for the flow. So here you see the full page screenshot of the main screen. And if I just cycle through, you can see the result of the generate, uh, clicking on the Dow Jones button, uh, clicking on stock history, uh, deleting all the stocks, and then returning, clicking on US index and returning to the index. So this creates the baseline for what is expected for this application. So now what I'm going to tradition to do is I am going to actually um, load a different version of the app because our, our developers have made a change to that app and we want to re-execute the same test against the new version. So all I'm doing is actually um, pasting in the new version and now I'm gonna execute that same test again, and we should expect to see a comparison of the current state of the app versus the actual baseline or the expected result. So here, if I again come to uh, the automation uh, script is running on the same device, we'll actually see it uh, step through the application we're gonna click on the Dow Jones, we're gonna generate another stock quote, 
We're going to click on the history. We're going to delete the, all the stocks. And then we're going to click on the index to return back. So as this test emerges and completes, we'll notice that we actually have visual differences. And what I want to show now um, is this is the current state of the session list in um, Cobaton. Um, so you can see the, the status of all of your tests. What we will be soon releasing is the integration between the two platforms so that if I actually look at the integrated uh, product dashboard, the session list, we'll actually see a status indicator for the visual uh, component of the test. You can see the first run has um, actually uh, passed with no issues, but the second actually did perform um, and see validation causing a failed in status. And we can click on the failed test result, which will launch us over to the Apply Tools dashboard, where we can then actually review the actual current state of that test run versus the result. And I'm actually going to click on the one that I just ran. Um, so you can see that we have an unresolved test. Um, we've actually seen that we have screens that are actually failing um, accessibility validation from a color contrast perspective. Um, you can see each step in the flow that has actually failed. We can easily switch over to the um, gallery view. So if we had a set of screens that passed and were green, we could filter out to only the screens that actually have um, differences. And here, what I want to do as a starting point, we can see that we have five screens with differences. I actually want, before I start managing those differences, I actually want to apply auto maintenance um, using our Visual AI so that we can actually group similar changes by the screen. So here, if I group steps by similar differences, you'll actually see that I went from five screens to actually groups of two. And you can see that we have four screens that actually have um, a common difference. So here, um, using the intelligence of our auto maintenance, we've now isolated to um, the actual um, difference that we saw. And if we toggle back and forth, and let me uh, filter out a little bit. Um, so here, um, if I switch back and forth, we can actually see that um, it looks like air meets causing a little bit of issue there. Uh, but you can see that we actually have a change in the stock quote, um, which is actually a failure because it should be stock quote. It shouldn't be pluralized. So here we have a visual regression from what we've seen. Um, so here, how we collaborate with additional team members is leveraging our annotation feature. So here we can create a bug region and identify that we have um, an incorrect spelling, uh, incorrect text. So this creates a uh, bug inside of Apply Tools. And if we wanted to collaborate with another member of the team, whether that be a product owner, a product designer, um, a business analyst, any team member that knows um, how the, the product should look and feel, we can collaborate with them so that they can make a decision of whether this is intended or unintended. Um, and what I can do here is just say, hey, please investigate. And when I post this, I have the ability, they will get an email for them to drill back to this screen um, to be able to drill down for any details further. We also have the ability to directly link um, this issue to JIRA um, as well as Rally. 
Um, so we have the ability to one click create that JIRA issue to improve the efficiency um, of the bug creation process. It actually preserves all of the context from Apply tools. So the reporter of the issue doesn't have to um, download the image, doesn't have to input all the information on how to reproduce it. All of that context is prever uh, preserved from Apply tools inside of the defect. And then ultimately, because we know that this is actually a defect, um, we want to actually uh, reject this test because this isn't the, um, the desired result. So we're actually gonna refuse this test and reject this as a defect moving forward. So the next step is actually taking a look at the next screen. And you can see that we actually have um, a couple defects on this page. So we, we do have the same stock quote issue. Um, so here, let's add another D, uh, bug annotation here because we know this is actually a defect. Um, so we can re uh, repeat that, so defect. Um, and that creates it on this particular screen. And we actually want to fail the test if we see that um, defect again. But now we actually, let's move on to the next uh, defect that we have. Um, so here, we actually see that we change from um, a lighter font to a bolding for Visa Inc. And we know that there was a new feature to change how this was um, laid out. So we're going to allow that one to proceed. So this one we will accept. And then let's move to the last one is if I zoom out, we actually have um, some dynamic content here. Um, so here we have a situation where the dynamic content has flagged the result because we are actually looking and analyzing this page just like a human would with our strict algorithm. So the way that we have handled dynamic content is through the use of our layout match level and leverage the AI to validate the structure of this dynamic content without having to um, identify and highlight a false positive due to a content change. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna highlight the time and date stamp here, and I'm gonna make it bigger to cover the entire date because every time I execute that test, it's actually going to um, you know, flag that result. Um, so once I add this, um, the AI will look to automatically apply this region across the different steps within my suite. So leveraging the power of the AI to add these dynamic content regions without having to do that manually. And then ultimately, because we want this region saved, we want to save the change of the uh, visa uh, integration uh, in that visa change. We will actually approve this, which will actually accept the new change for the bolding and the layout region moving forward so that any subsequent runs will expect to see that the uh, visa um, or the stock quote is actually um, generated um, and we will handle the dynamic um, content uh, accordingly. So let's save that and close it and save the test result so that, you know, the next subsequent time I run that test will actually flag the appropriate defects. If we see stock quotes, again, um, we'll handle dynamic content appropriately um, and continue to scale um, across that. So what we've shown here today um, in the time is we've, we've taken um, a manual test session. We've actually converted that to an automate, automated script. We've actually executed that on the Cobaton platform. We've infused it with visual AI so that we can track the visual and functional um, capabilities of the screen and highlight that through automation versus having to do that manually. 
Um, so this was just a small taste um, of what we can do um, inside of the platform. We'll open it up um, to any questions that you may have, or Frank, if you want to add any a value, please do. Yeah, so um, Martin, we had a question uh, that we can uh, respond to together from, from Gopal. Are you capturing battery usage, uh, CPU, and memory usage along with response time during the test execution? Um, so if you could bring up uh, that test that you ran, that first manual test that you ran, Martin, um, I'd like to show uh, what that looks like in Session Explorer. One of the unique... Um, one of the new capabilities of the Apple Tools Cobiton uh, platform is when you um, we capture deep uh, information, what we call session exhaust. It's everything that's happening during that session, including log files, memory, CPU. And if you could press that play button um, along, yeah, right there. So that this is an iMovie inspired interface that shows along the bottom each of the test steps that were performed, the action that was performed. In the upper right is the screenshot panel. This screenshot panel shows the screenshot that was captured and then the interaction that was performed. And then the upper left is the insights panel. In this case, we're showing system metrics. And if Martin, you can um, uh, close that and just show, um, show the C click on the CPU, you can see that we're capturing memory, network, battery drain. And so if you click on battery drain, it shows all along the test step, like every test step, what the battery drain was um, during, uh, during that execution. And um, if you click back to where you were clicking before, which is the dropdown um, above with the review system metrics, um, you can also uh, click on Appium Inspector, right? So, if you're an automation engineer, um, one of the biggest challenges is why did my script fail? Uh, and what this provides is we're the only ones in the industry, the platform we're providing, to actually see the XML tree af after the test is completed. So if what typically happens is a test crash, the test and you don't know what the cause is. Now you can go in and inspect the elements just like you could with in a live Appium inspector or a COVID inspector. You can do that after the session. That is amazing. So the next question, I would love to hear if this tool can manage OS up downgrading. We're in a situation where we need to use a physical device, no device cloud testing allowed. It have limited devices. So we need to upgrade and downgrade the OS for full coverage. And, um, you know, so, uh, and I'm not sure what the limitations are for, um, you know, being able to use cloud. We, we do have customer, we have one customer who has, uh, on-prem. So this platform that we're talking about, this is really important. It's not just cloud, right? If you, we have a, a customer, um, that deploys over 3000 devices on their premises. And so being able to, um, and they have, so many, such a, a wide range of devices because, you know, they, they have different operating system versions and um, uh, iOS is very difficult to downgrade. Android is more, more doable. Um, but my, I would suggest getting a wide variety of devices that have different, different operating systems so that you can um, test across those different versions and, and uh, device types. Martin, I think this one's for you from Anita. Baseline, is it possible to exclude some areas from validation? Uh, absolutely. We can actually do it a couple different ways. Um, so inside the platform, uh, let me share my screen now. Um, so inside uh, of the um inside the baseline, for example, um, just like I did for the dynamic content, um, we have the ability to, instead of using the layout region, we can actually use what we refer to as ignore. Um, so if there is specific content that you wanted to ignore, um, you can actually do that by just drawing it around, say I wanted to ignore just the header. 
um, I have the ability to do that. Um, I also could do this programmatically. Uh, so when I executed that eyes.check inside of the test framework um, and took the full page screenshot, if I knew in advance what the, the state or the areas that I wanted to ignore, I could easily do that. Um, the uh, counter point to that is you would only use ignore for specific areas that you truly wanted to ignore. Um, so if there were things like, you know, um, um, you know, time, date stamp, version information, you know, those are absolutely there. Um, but if you were concerned at all about the presence of uh, an element inside of this region, we would um, recommend that you use layout as well. Uh, instead of ignore. Um, we also have other ways to handle uh, different types of content, um, like things like ignoring colors, as well as uh, for uh, floating regions. So for content that flows uh, absolutely around the screen and shifts, we can use a floating annotation as well. Um, and the last thing I'll also say is you know by the we recommend doing full page screenshots um, across the board, um, but if you have set uh, specific requirements to only validate a specific area area, um, you could have multiple checks within um, a particular test, and instead of targeting the full screen, we could actually target just that um, area of concern. Yeah. Um, so we have multiple ways and flexibility to handle that, you know, based on your requirements. Very cool. So hopefully that answered your question. Looks like we have um, another one uh, from D. Can we check API calls? Can we test with the API call um, data manipulation to simulate various test scenarios? So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen um, because I think there's some really exciting stuff in this regard. Uh, and we got in share. And window, entire screen. All right. Um, so can uh, so what this shows? I hope everyone can see it. Martin, can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Awesome. So what this shows is um, again session explorer. This is a a uh, longer test than Martin executed. And um, we have the ability, as Mar Martin mentioned earlier in the slides, to, to capture the payloads. So we can actually look at the request response payloads between um, the, the front end and the, the back, or for, between the device and the back end system. And so we can see um, at every test step, what was that, uh, what was going on at that moment. And um, we talked about, you know, Briefly, we talked about performance uh, and response times. We can actually see for every test step how long it took to execute that test step. So in this one, it took about four seconds. Um, so we have a lot of rich data that we're capturing and running artificial intelligence against that session exhaust. But hopefully that answers your question. And then the next question, is there any functionality which will support to upload your code directly to cloud repository like GitHub Bitbucket? Um, yeah, so what we provide in, is uh, an application repository. So we don't uh, maintain the code. We, we believe in separation of concerns, and that's great for GitHub and, and Bitbucket. What we do is if you want to um, either upload your app to an app repository and put that into your automation script, like, like Martin was demonstrating, that you can do all that and it. We cache that so it's a really fast install. Again, everything is about speed. How quickly can we execute those tests? Um, and then, uh, you know, being able to um, run those on a, on a hourly or you know daily basis. Um, the next question from D uh, was, can we test compliance and privacy content display based on different language region? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I know we're running out of, uh, out of time here, but absolutely. Um, so a common use case for Apply tools is being able to validate um, the, the actual content uh, of the compliance notices. And we're going to track that over time. 
We also have the ability to handle that uh, across different languages um, and we can handle it at scale. Um, so we act absolutely can handle both of those uh, types of scenario and we can um, actually you know, discuss that with you um, offline for sure. Great. And I think we have one more. Ah, how do we uh, define and manage the real device farm? Is it possible to access from different locations? Um, one of the most powerful parts of the Cobiton product in the Apple Tools platform that we're working together on is you can deploy this behind your firewall or in the cloud. Um, and if it's uh, either way, you can put devices around the world. Um, we have one customer that has devices in five different locations around the world, um, all connected to a single user interface and being able to access those in millisecond latency for manual testing and um, two times speed for automation testing. So that, uh, that ability to adapt to your locations, they, and, and one of our customers actually has it moving around so they've put um, they've put a Cobiton deployment in a uh, in a moving uh, vehicle. If you'd like to see a personalized demonstration of the solution, you can schedule a call with one of our testing specialists by using the link below. There's also some resources on the resources tab to help you learn more. All right. Well, thank you um, so much for uh, Frank and Martin for an excellent session. If Thank you, Frank. I appreciate it and uh, look forward to talking with everybody soon. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Pam. Thanks, everyone. Take care.